Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, an impediment to advancement. Barney. Barney looked up to see Dan nervously peeking around the corner. The older man smiled. Hello, Dan. What can I do for you? Dan nervously shuffled into the room. Well, Barney, he started, I'm in a bind, and I'd like to ask you for a favor. Now, Dan, said Barney, you know I'm supposed to be saving these favors up for our customers. We should not be relying on them. I know, Barney, said Dan, but listen, I need this. Barney listened patiently as Dan explained the situation. He was in pretty bad shape. The worst of it was that if the situation progressed, then Dan would not be able to advance in the company. He will be locked in where he was. Barney nodded, understandingly. As he had said before, they weren't supposed to be doing much for themselves. But here he figured he could make an exception. Dan was young and full of energy, and he felt bad that he might be held back by the situation. At least, Barney could try and do something. As Dan finished the story, Barney smiled at him reassuringly. He said, I'll see what I can do. Dan smiled back gratefully. A few days later, Dan was back and on cloud nine. Hello, Barney, he said. The situation is all cleared up. It looks like there's nothing to stop me now. Fantastic, said Barney. This calls for a celebration. He opened his desk drawer and pulled out two ice cream cones, handing one to Dan. Dan nearly dropped the ice cream in shock. It was a hot day, and these cones were not wrapped or anything, just lying in Barney's drawer. Barney treated it as if it were nothing, and happily licked his ice cream, gesturing for Dan to do the same. Even Dan's story was not that extraordinary for Barney. When he came to Barney, describing a serious jaw infection that might prevent him from being ordained a priest. Barney simply put his faith in God, blessed the young novice, and encouraged him to thank God for whatever may come. Whether the healing came or not would be entirely up to God, and they would thank him either way. Barney received many requests over the years for such prayers from the multitude who came to his office, which was in reality the entryway to the monastery. But for many people, it was their destination. At all hours of the day, they would come and line up to have a chance to spend just a little time with this humble priest, a capuchin born with the name Bernard, and who lived most of his life in the city of Detroit, named Blessed Solanus Casey. And for this week, that's the word. So, John Peter, if the listeners are like me, I know next to nothing about Blessed Solanus Casey. But thanks to this story, we have more information about him. Yes. I also knew next to nothing about him. I heard about him. I heard about him because he was beatified at Ford Stadium in Detroit, which is very interesting. Not some words you hear together. Beatification in Detroit and Ford Stadium. That is very unique. Mm-hmm. 
So he was a Capuchin priest. He mainly spent his time in Detroit and in New York City. Actually, he's from a bit further west than that, but then he joined the Capuchins and so served in that area. And just so you know, the Capuchin is part of the Franciscan family. So the Franciscan order uh, founded by St. Francis of Assisi. Was the Capuchin order founded by St. Bruno? That sounds right, but I don't know. Wikipedia. Do we have a... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I don't know. That... No, no. Isn't St. Bruno the Carthusians? As the Carthusians, that's right. They, because the, the Carthusians, they hardly speak. That's right. And so St. Bruno is the Carthusians. I don't know who is the uh, one that um, is kind of responsible for the Capuchins. You if he be. was a Carthusian, he used up like all his words for like five years in that conversation in our story. Exactly. And they probably don't eat ice cream. Probably not. I would not imagine that. It's very interesting because there was a seminarian at the North American College when I was there who decided to enter the Carthusians. You know, I remember having a conversation with somebody about him a few years later, and they said, hey, you know, it's interesting. I never heard anything from him, <laughs> which, of course, you wouldn't. Yes. So it was founded 1525 by Friar Matteo Serafini, who I know nothing about. So It could be another story. could be another story. That is true. When I start searching for a capuchin, the first thing that comes up, by the way, is uh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there is a capuchin monkey what, from cool. Panama? Color and kind of looks like a capuchin habit. I'm not going to comment any further on that. <laughs> this is totally getting out of how we were going to talk about the extra words. All I wanted to do, John Peter, was just tell people that Cap Capucia was part of the Franciscan family. I'm not a Franciscan. I don't know anything more about Franciscan. And now I'm looking at a monkey <laughs> called the Capucia monkey. All right. Let's go back to our Blessed Solanus. Blessed Solanus Casey was a friar in the Capuchin order. He served as a porter. He was a simplex priest. He couldn't hear confessions or preach because he w did not do well enough in the schooling for them to be confident in his ability to do so. And that was a situation in the church. I mean, for example, St. John Vianney was another one for a while. They wouldn't let him hear confessions. I actually don't know the history, but we know at least one other saint besides Blessed Solanus in that situation. Right, because preaching and hearing confessions is a huge responsibility, and that makes sense why they'd be very careful with that. So anyway, he was a porter, and he also would enroll people in the Seraphic Mass Association, which was the friars would enroll you in a book, and they'd pray for you, and they'd offer their masses for you. Through that, he was responsible for so many miracles. People came and flocked to him in order to just speak with him. He would, he would just listen to these many people who would come visiting him at all hours of the day, lining up to spend a little bit of time with him. So it's an incredible man. And his big message to people who came to visit him would be always being grateful to God. His constant refrain throughout his life was Deo gratias. Thanks be to God. And what a great lesson as we move into this new year. The first of all, Blessed Solanus is that he listened to people and that he just encouraged them to be thankful. I think those are two great lessons that I know I can work on in my own life. And imagine if all of us uh, were able to work on that just a little bit each and every day, the world would be a better place because we would be in a much better place because we would be as more grateful people more attuned to God's presence in our lives. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story, An Impediment to Advancement, at thunderrock.org, where you can see a picture of Blessed Solanus Casey, because we have those, because he's a very modern saint. He died, I believe, in the 50s or 60s, and he was in Detroit, the Industrial Center, 
of the country at the time. We'll also include a picture of the capuchin monkey. Thunderrock.org is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links in our email if you have any feedback or story ideas. I think we just earned a little more time in purgatory for talking about the capuchin monkey. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.